The 2012 Imperial Theater Lifetime Achievement Award recipient is Dr. Thomas J. Condon. So it was very important for him to be present. Um, he uh, rarely had meetings at night because he felt he should be home. He always kept an office in the house. And often after dinner, he would work till midnight in his office, but he was home. And you could interrupt him, and I cannot remember one time interrupting him and him saying, look, I'm busy. He always had time. And I think that's what most people know about him, that if they ask to speak to him, he will give them time and he will really listen to them. He, he was a mentor. He was a, he was a, a leader, um, more than a leader um, in, in a sort, because we look at leadership as being having certain qualities. He had all those qualities of a leader plus intelligence, his own academic background, his, his love of history, his love of his adopted city of St. John. He brought all that together in addition to the leadership qualities that he already had that seemed to be natural with him, you know. My warmth was uh, to he and the symphony, but I used to say to him, now, Tom, I'm not going any further than that because the symphony is the only thing I go to when I sit down and mind my business. And he used to laugh about that. And he used to kid me because I, uh, he'd say, I'm just unminding your business when he'd call. So we'd, we'd laugh about that. Tom was always calm, collected, and provided that sense of he's still in charge of, you know, sailing that ship to the right path. And I remember times when we had staff in the bi-capital office and we had no more money, we couldn't pay them. And he and other people like Michael Wenberg and Don Wishart, myself, we stuck with it and we took money out of our own pockets in order to keep a secretary in the office for another couple of weeks or a month until things got resolved. He was, he believed so much in this theater. Um, Sunday dinner was a big thing. My father was a good cook, he enjoyed cooking. And with all our activities, my mother often taught through the week at night because she enjoyed having mature students in her class, so that's when she scheduled her classes. But Sunday dinner was a big deal. He made something nice and we were really expected to be home because we were busy the rest of the week, but that was, that was the family time. And I called him uh, uh, the week before he died because I was going away and I called him and had a lovely chat with him and he told me he had got a donation from someone for the Symphony found, uh, Foundation, and uh, I said, oh goodness gracious, and you've worked so, so hard. So there were the wonderful things that he, that he did, and unassuming, extremely unassuming in all the things he did. Whenever I walk into this theater, even to this day, I still cannot believe that we had a role to play, and he was the one that took us along that by the hand and, and led us and kept us involved and reassured us every minute of the day. So th this, from a, a legacy point of view for Tom to the arts and cultural community, this building is his one most significant legacy. Um, but he has so many others. His mother was a uh, ferocious reader. Um, she had about a grade five education, um, and, um, but she loved to read and, and loved to read about all kinds of things. And she worked uh, most of her life as a maid, uh, and she worked for several homes uh, of professors uh, that taught at Yale. And so she had access to books as well. And I think that's where he got his love of reading and pursuit of knowledge and uh, um, developed his own creative mind in his own way. He was just a wonderful, wonderful uh, person and the contribution he made, when you go back and measure that contribution, it was um, tremendous. I think to qualify him as a man and as a leader, he was the epitome, I would say, of this term that we use all the time, a scholar and a gentleman. He truly was a gentleman.